Hey there guys, it's Garrett with Mountain Rescue again and uh, this time we're talking about my big three for my 2019 Appalachian Trail Sobo Novo Flip Flop. <laughs> um, so first thing with my big three obviously is my backpack. Um, this year I'll be using the Superior Wilderness Designs uh, 50 liter long haul Dyneema X-Pack uh, backpack. Um, for me, uh, I took the frame out. It is frameless. It's an awesome company. Uh, 50 liter internal, 10 liter external. So technically it's a 60 liter pack. It's way too big for me now as far as what I've got my gear down to. But I love the pack and I don't have any reason to replace it right now. So this is the one I'm staying with. This company is great. Um, I have about 100 miles of use on this pack. And uh, some of the things I did, um, let me just tell you so this company their website superiorwildernessdesigns.com they're awesome I emailed with them the whole time it did take about 12 weeks to get my pack so it is a, a lengthy wait but totally worth it um, so their long haul comes with two aluminum stays that go in the back to make the frame I took them out just because I'm at a point now with my base weight I don't really need them they're just added weight and it's a comfortable pack uh, because of their hip belt, nice thick padded hip belt, thick padded straps, the stitching's perfect so it doesn't dig into you anywhere. That's a big thing that some of the other ultralight companies I've noticed, their straps, just where they do the stitching, it really causes a burn you know, on your shoulders after a while. Big hip pockets. But uh, in emailing with them and telling them exactly what we wanted, um, I went with the teal bottom, teal pockets. Custom colors, pretty cool. There's a lot of companies doing that now, but these guys were one of the first for sure. Um, right here on the bottom, one of my add-ons was these little straps. Um, they're nothing more than this cord. Um, and I use this to put my sit pad. Um, a sit pad on there, it protects the bottom of the pack when I put it down. If I'm just putting it down, like, you know, we're stopping to get some water or just anywhere where I'm not gonna sit down on my butt pad. Um, Stays on there, protects the bottom of my pack. Uh, you can kind of see there's a few little marks. That's this pine sap, of course, within like the first trip. First time I put down the pack, didn't have the pad on there. Boom, got pitch on it and just reminded me, oh yeah, that's why I got that. Um, so yeah, so that was an addition. I mean, everything is a little bit extra money, but the entirety of this pack cost me like 309 bucks. Um, that... You know, it's basically the same with tax for an Osprey, like 65 liter or a Gregory and stuff. I mean, the concept of an ultralight pack being super expensive is just not true anymore. Um, so this pack cost me, you know, call it 310 bucks. And, you know, it's custom to fit me, size, everything. And it weighs in without the aluminum stays at 27 ounces versus my Gregory 65 liter pack. Though it was a great pack, very comfortable, carried a super heavy load um, of 35 to 40 pounds, um, it weighed in at four pounds. So, I mean, already this is, you know, less than two pounds and carries just as much. So, uh, some of the other things I did uh, for me is I have these clips for the side compression of the roll top. Now traditionally their packs come a lot like Z-Packs where you just clip on top. I really like the clips on the side where you can torsion them down um, and that's just because a lot of my paddling um, with doing canoe trips here in Maine down some of our rivers like the Allagash and the St. Croix River um, cinching down the straps on the side just helps to keep everything a bit more dry so that i went for that i like that design um these packs do this size comes with load lifters i know it's hard to see because everything's black uh, but it does come with load lifters to adjust the strap height to you um, but you do choose they have a small medium large uh length um so I went with those. So uh, the other thing I did here is the big pouch on the outside. Typically it's just a regular mesh. I went with the the Lycra. I think that's what it's called. Lycra. Um, stretchy pouch. I really like that. And I added one to my left strap. 
cell phone, uh, the tripod that I'm using to film right now can slide right in here. Um, you know, really anything, candy bars and stuff, just having it more handy. It does have two really nice pockets on the side. These are huge. Um, you know, I tend to keep like, uh, like anti-chafe ointment and then the other one. Um, I have all my electronics I try and keep in here that I might use throughout the day. My Nightcore headlamp. Uh, my battery pack, you know, anything like that. And then I also have a fanny pack that I will be uh, showing later in a different video that I'm going to be carrying that's going to carry some snacks and stuff like that. But um, two huge side pockets, really nice. Could carry two smart water bottles. Um, for the AT, uh, with the prevalence of water, I'll be carrying a bladder um, for filling and filtering. But really, I'm only going to carry, to start at least, just one one liter smart water bottle. Um, I don't plan on really carrying more than that, maybe two, but there's so much water, I don't mind filtering. Foxby and I have two different filters we'll be taking. Um, we've used both, and I think, you know, just saving weight on water, I don't wanna carry more than a liter at a time. I know how much I drink, uh, particularly when we're in Pennsylvania, to start off going across a lot of the flatland and farmland, not gonna need a ton of water carry. There's so much water, it's springtime, so that's that. Um, so like I said, the pack's awesome. Fits everything fine. It's a little big. I could get away with a 40 now instead of a 50. I mean, without the frame in it, I'm really finding I can start rolling the straps into it with all my stuff in. Now that I'm down to like an 11 pound base weight, um, I'm still trying to get lower. This is too big, but it's an awesome pack and I'm excited to have it and we'll use it on this through hike and hopefully on our future hikes like the PCT where uh, longer carries with food and longer water carries will be necessary. So it's a great pack. So uh, obviously we're going to have a shelter system for the two of us. And um, we have gone through trials and tribulations of a ton of different uh, two-person tents. And really what we have found, uh, no matter which one we've used, uh, they're not big enough for the two of us. I'm a pretty big guy and, um, you know, we just... Two-person tents are great for uh, the concept of fitting just the two of you in there, backpacking. But fitting your gear in and being able to move around or have to spend time in there if it's bad weather, um, it's just not really a feasible thing for anybody of any size. So we splurged um, this year, and for this hike, we will be using the Z-Pex Triplex, weighing in at... According to my scale, 21 ounces, it's not the same as what they say online, but uh, 21 ounces, awesome tent. I'm super excited because I carry the tent. Foxby carries the stakes. Um, so 21 ounces is a huge drop from our previous tent. We have used a few other ones. We started off with uh, Foxfeet's MSR Hubba Hubba uh, two-person tent, and that was like, I don't know, just shy of four pounds, but we could split it. Um, and then we moved on to the Lightheart Gear Duo, um, which is a one-piece tent. So I carried that, and that was, um, oh, I don't remember, two, almost three pounds, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, two pounds, six ounces, somewhere in there. But this, 21 ounces, uh, way lighter. And the thing about Cuban fiber, which is what this is made out of, is it doesn't retain water. Um, I really liked our Light Heart Gear Duo, but one thing we found out when we were in Arizona, hiking on the Arizona Trail, and we were in the fall, um, so there was a lot of condensation due to the temperature changes between night and day in the desert, um, especially near the Grand Canyon as well, is um, Sil Nylon, unfortunately, uh, absorbs water. Um, it retains water. I wouldn't say it absorbs it, but it retains it and what we were finding was it would make things sag. So I'd wake up in the morning and the toe box of my down sleeping bag would be wet. Um, I was finding myself having to figure out ways to solve that. And then when I try and get out of the tent, I was hitting my head and my shoulders and stuff like that, trying to get out. Um, I'm not very flexible, I'm working on that. Um, but for me, getting out of the tent in the morning is really tough, um, especially when I'm stiff. And what was happening is I was soaked by the time I got out of the tent because there's just a lot of retention of condensation on the nylon. Um, and then me being the one to carry the tent, one thing that we found out from watching some other people's videos um, is in the morning, I would put the tent just on the outside of my pack here 
big old ball and when we found a place to dry it out that was great but if we couldn't dry it out because it was bad weather for multiple days it just stayed wet there was no way to really get that water out of there and it doubled in weight um, so I didn't like that and it just wasn't enough room for the two of us and we really found that so we splurged uh, we've been dog sitting for the last year or so it's an awesome German Shepherd named Apollo and with the funds that we have raised from that we invested in this now it is a hefty sticker price uh, it's seven hundred dollars but we've sent it up once on the deck here um, we had a nice day it was in the 60s and snow was melting and stuff the deck was nice we sat out there and we said you know what let's just set up the tent we set up the tent we slept in it most of the night uh, we were actually dog sitting Apollo at that time frame and he was antsy because we wouldn't let him outside so we ended up bailing around three or four in the morning going back inside because he was freaking out all night but one thing we found is the tent is huge it we could fit literally another person in between us we love it we can that means we can bring our shoes our packs everything into the tent still have space and the fact it doesn't retain water um, there was enough room that we weren't touching the walls the way it's designed I mean I, I think it's just gonna be an awesome change and the fact that it's way lighter for me to have to carry. Uh, I mean, all around just an awesome investment. Um, big ups to Z-Packs. I mean, we have a lot of stuff from Z-Packs, from pillow, stuff sacks, ditty bags. Um, Fox Feet has another stuff sack for her quilt that she put in there. Um, you know, there's, we, Z-Packs has been great and we've invested a lot in them. They make great quality products and uh, I'm really excited to take this one. Um, so speaking of sleeping bags, moving on to that. So uh, I will be taking for cold weather um, sleeping. So in the spring and in the fall, when we get back up here into New England, uh, my REI sleeping bag. Now for cold weather, I I won't say that I'm a sleeping bag or a quilt guy. I just haven't invested in a quilt. Uh, this was a really good deal. Last summer we were down in uh, Delaware at REI. And it was just on sale, and it was just too hard of a bargain to pass up for a sub two pound sleeping bag. Um, so this is the, I want to make sure I get it right. Hold on. Aha! Um, oh, so this is the REI Igneo 17 degree regular sleeping bag. Um, it has a comfort rating down to 17. Um, or limit down to 17, comfort rating of around 25 degrees, which I don't foresee us getting much lower than that. I've stayed in it when it's down into the high teens. I've been totally fine. I sleep warm anyway. But what I really like about the sleeping bag versus a quilt is when it is cold like that, this hood, um, it's awesome. I burrow right down and uh, cinch it right up. And this is a broad shouldered sleeping bag. It's not a tight fit, which is great because I have large shoulders. So what I really like is I can lay flat and, and then I can, I'm a side sleeper predominantly. So I can rotate on my side and the sleeping bag stays flat. Um, it's big enough that I can move around inside of it without it moving with me. And I really like that. Um, so it weighs in at 30 ounces, um, which is awesome. Uh, it's, yeah, let me make sure, 30 ounces, yeah. So it's sub two pounds. Um, it's not as light as like, you know, Fox Feet has two uh, Enlightened Equipment quilts that are definitely like 21 ounces and like 19 ounces. Mm, those are awesome. I would love to change to something like that, but for right now, this was too good of a deal to pass up and I don't mind it. Um, I, I actually really enjoy it. I'm in love with this sleeping bag. So I don't, I won't be changing it. I won't be investing in anything new. This will be with me for the foreseeable future. Um, so 30 ounces, my first sub two pound sleeping bag. Um, it doesn't loft up a ton, um, uh, you know, like a 900 fill. I believe it's only 700 or 800 fill down. I don't remember. Sorry. Um, but I really love it. It's an amazing one. Uh, hold on. So, uh, once it gets warmer in the middle of the summer, particularly when we're in the deep south, like Georgia, trying to finish the end of our first leg, and then starting to head north out of Pennsylvania, um, I have this Chinook uh, technical outdoor gear. 
this is a 50 degree synthetic sleeping bag. Um, I bought this way back when I was in high school. I mean, I'm 28 now, gonna be 29 when we're on the trail. I bought this, I guess when I was like 18 or 19, pretty young. It's, uh, it's not the lightest. It weighs in at 20 ounces, but it's synthetic, so it can get damp for cowboy camping and stuff. And what's great is it opens all the way up, so I can use it like a quilt in the summer when it is hot, and I like to have my feet kicking out and stuff. It's a great little uh, mummy bag for when it is a little bit chillier those summer nights. It fits me, and once again, it was one of those things I didn't have another... I didn't have any reason to replace it. I like the fact it's synthetic. That way, um, you know, I can cowboy camp when it's hot out and we don't want to set up the tent or we're in the shelter and there might be a mist or anything. It's totally fine. It's been with me for a long time and um, yeah, I like it. It's very well made. Great zipper setup. Good cover with the Velcro. So 20 ounce. It's a great little bag. Um, next talk about what I sleep on when I'm on these sleeping bags. That's always a key thing, and that also has been a constantly changing thing uh, for myself. But just because it's a constantly changing thing doesn't mean I'm doing anything wild. Um, I invested last year and used it this entire previous summer backpacking in the same sleeping pad that basically everybody's carrying now. Um, it's the Thermares Neo Air. Um, I don't know what generation this is, but it's one of the ones where they started working out some of the loud noises. It's not as loud as the original. Um, this probably has close to 100 miles on it. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Some uh, other trips and stuff. But it's awesome. It's the regular. It comes in at 12 ounces. Or, uh, sorry, 14 ounces. It's awesome. I love it. It keeps me warm. I uh, Being a side sleeper, um, I've gone through some other pads from Thermarest that just weren't very thick. Um, my last one was the Pro Light Plus, which was a great great pad for laying on my back, but the moment I got on my side, I could definitely feel my hip being uh, cold at some points in the night, particularly in the fall here in Maine, um, going out on the trail. And there was this other times where it would deflate a little bit with the difference in temperature, and next thing I could feel my hip just being on the ground. This sleep, sleeping pad, I haven't had that at all. Um, it's really awesome, and what I do like is if I pump it up all the way, which I normally do, um, right? You know, I'll reinflate it. I'll inflate it when I make put the tent up, set up all everything in there, eat dinner, do whatever we're doing, and then when I get ready to go to bed, I reinflate it so that um, it's max inflation. Then I lay on it, and it feels like a rock. It's not great. But what's cool is then you just kind of twist this thing and you just let yourself deflate just a little bit and I'll be laying on my side and I'll get it just right, uh, close up the valve, have it perfect and I, I sleep great. Um, particularly if I'm tired, whew, out. Um, you know, it's funny, sleeping in a bed at home, I can go all night and never have to go pee. Backpacking, I'd say it's a rarity. I have to be real tired to make it the whole way through the night without having to get up at least once to go pee. Um, but it's kind of, you know, this pad, that has become more frequent than I make it all the way through the night with the addition of this sleeping pad. So it's an awesome sleeping pad. I don't remember what they cost, somewhere like 120 bucks. Great investment. I mean, particularly if you're through hiking, um, you know, there's a few places where carrying more weight and not spending the extra money is obviously that's fine. Uh, in my opinion, your your big three, um, and you know, sleeping is huge. If you want to have that energy to be able to push over the, you know, maybe two mountains the next day instead of just one, you got to have that energy. So food is one thing, all these other stuff, but sleep is huge. Um, so the pad, your shelter, and your sleeping bag or quilt, huge. I mean, I would not be trying to pinch pennies in that department to save money. Um, you know, and it's not about weight thing. It's about comfort thing. I mean, I could have a way lighter setup. I could have, I mean, I own the closed uh, cell phone pad and could cut it down to only being my torso and could invest in a quilt and have a way lighter, lighter setup. But I would not sleep as well. And sleep is huge. And so... I'll be taking this, um, and that that's just it. Uh, 
sleeping is a big thing and having that energy to do everything and be in a happy mood, worth it. Worth every penny and worth the ounces to me. Um, next, uh, I think the only thing left with my big three that I like to include is what I put everything in inside my backpack. So, this crinkly loud bastard is the Nyaflume pack liner. Um, this one I've been using, uh, you know, the classic unpacking and repacking of my backpack for the last month, getting ready. And so the Nyaflume pack liner, it's loud. I am not sold on it. It weighs in an ounce, so I guess it's lighter than a black contractor bag, but it's not as big. It doesn't give you that extra room um, to play with when you're trying to roll stuff down. But it is light. I like that you can see through it so that you can see where everything is. Foxy and I will both be taking our stuff in one of these inside our pack. If it doesn't work out, um, then we'll swap back. I have seen a few videos from some other people where they, in a heavy rain and heavy um, humidity, this has started to collect condensation. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. What I really don't like is this noise. Particularly, this is going to be my first trip where we're really staying in shelters, being on the Appalachian Trail. There's shelters everywhere versus the Arizona Trail and a lot of other places there are no shelters. Um, the Laurel Highlands Trail that we did last spring was actually only shelters, but it was just Foxby and I. There was only one other night that we interacted with another person. The first two nights we saw other people at other shelters, we didn't talk with them, and the shelters are so far apart um, that you can't hear each other. But uh, this will be the first time where we're staying in shelters with other people. Um, new for me, I'm, a, I'm actually pretty excited about it. But this, at 7 in the morning when I want to sleep in and Joe Blow is trying to get up and get packed, I don't hold anything against him beyond the fact that this sucker is as loud as can be. And there's really, as far as I can tell, and I've tried at least 100 times now to unpack and repack my pack, there's no way to do it without that sucker making tons of crinkly noises. And if people are complaining about the sounds this thing makes when it's people are moving around on their pad and this crinkles, this is like 10 times worse. This is like the atomic bomb of crinkly noises. So we'll see how long this lasts. It's also in no way, unlike a trash bag that has some stretch, this has zero stretch. Um, so I can definitely see some breakage happening. Right now it seems pretty ind indestructible, but who knows, you start putting stuff in there. I try and streamline everything by keeping sharp items inside of other bags so it's not just Lucy in this thing. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm just worried about the sounds. I don't, I'll don't. i feel horrible if I want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and Foxby and I want to get on the trail before the sun comes up and we're waking everybody else up because that's happening because it's raining outside and I want to get ready in the shelter. Um, so we'll see. But that's it. That finishes out my uh, big three. So I don't know. It, it all together, less than a couple of pounds, which is awesome. Um, you know, or I shouldn't say less than like four pounds um, or five. I don't know. I'm happy with it. My entire base weight is right around 11 pounds. Um, I don't expect myself to be carrying more than say 20 pounds at any one time um, on this hike, except in the 100 mile wilderness here in Maine. There might be a few other places where we choose to carry more food simply because we don't wanna go into certain towns because we know they're not great for resupplies. But beyond that, uh, you know, when it comes to summer, like dead of summer, and I swap out for my warm weather uh, sleeping stuff, my base weight drops down to like nine pounds or eight, eight point something. Um, at that point, I definitely am not concerned uh, with having a frame in my pack or any of this other stuff. So that finishes up my big three. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. I'm new to YouTube, but um, I'm going to keep these videos coming. So hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks. I'll check in with you later.